It's Brooke here from The Vintage Gardener. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, so today I am going to be going over um, the Rose Garden. I've told you guys a lot about it. I've never showed you guys like a complete list of everything that I have. And so tonight I'm going to do a slideshow presentation and I'm going to show you all of the roses in the Rose Garden. So let me uh, try this. Okay, so let me start the presentation and we are going to go from there. So Vintage Gardener presents La Rose Array. This is the French word for the Rose Garden. Uh, so Rose, um, first rose is Coco Loco. Um, I got this one from Heirloom Roses. Uh, this is what it looks like. I got a couple of blooms on it actually, even though I planted it very late. So I was very happy with that. It has a very light fragrance. Um, as you can see, it's kind of lavender, but it's kind of got those like brown um, tints to it. So I think it's gonna look really nice. And then I got Celestial Night. I also got this one from Heirloom Roses. This one did not bloom. So this is a picture from Heirloom Roses. I'm hoping mine looks something similar to this one. This one seems to be more of a, a purpley, a, a pinky dark purple. Uh, then I got Paris de Yves, uh, Paris de Yves, the Saint Laurent. Wait, hold on for a second. I think I added too many words to that. It's Paris de Yves Saint Laurent. Okay, it's not Eve Day. It's Eve Saint Laurent. So sorry about that, guys. Uh, but I can't wait to see this one. It's a nice pink. You know, it's got that kind of roughly look. I don't have anything like that in my garden. Uh, then the next one I got also from Heirloom Roses is called Lagerfeld. This one did bloom. And this is, I took a picture of it like this. And I was so excited because I'm like, oh my goodness, this is going to be open. It's going to be magnificent. And it came out the next day and a deer ate the bud. I was really pissed off. And then I also got a uh, blue girl from heirloom roses. And so this is what this one looks like. Uh, I can't wait to see this one. So blue girl, uh, Lagerfeld and the Sunbelt plum perfect are all in the same bed. And so, um, another one I got is Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, this one I got from Dambly's. Now the thing with this one is that, I mean, the, the, the bloom is beautiful and I'm sure you can see from the leaves, it did have some, you know, black spot, but despite that, it, I can't believe it bloomed as well. It had so many blooms on it. Cause I'm trying to think of the picture. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I think there were actually more than that. It had no leaves, but it had a lot of blooms. And so I can see, and the blooms actually last a long time in the bush. So I would imagine they're probably going to be like that in the vase. So I think that's going to be a really, really nice one for cut flowers. Uh, then I also got this one from um, Dambly's. It's called Intrigue. Um, it's like a, mm, like a, it's also a purpley pink. Um, I'll see how it compares to Celestial Night because they seem, in terms of color, they may be similar. But this one, the leaves, the petals on it seem like it might be a little bit more ruffly. Uh, then I got Arbor Rose Quicksilver. I don't know why it says Arbor's. It's supposed to be Arbor Rose. I think Autocrux got to this one, y'all. I should have seen that. Did not see it though. But anyway, um, it's Arbor Rose Quicksilver. I got this one from Antique Rose Emporium. This is a climber. So this is one of the ones that I have on the obelisk. Um, and then... Um, Heirloom Roses and A-R-E stands for Antique Rose Emporium. Both have this one. It's called Sunbelt Plum Perfect. And actually, now that I think about it, I think Grace Rose Farm might have it too. And so this is what it's going to look like. Um, I got some buds, but they didn't open, I think, because of the cold weather, which is fine. Um, but I'm looking forward to seeing this one bloom for next year. Um, I talked to, I think it's, his name is Ken from... Uh, the Rose Addict, and he said this does not have a scent, so that's unfortunate. Uh, then the next one is Munstead Wood. So this one I got from Flags Garden Center. I don't think this one is offered by David Austin Roses anymore. This is one I've, I've had the Munstead Wood for a little bit. Um, I had, I forgot how many I had. 
I think I did pick up one or two extra from flags, but I think the, the, like that's the end of the, dis, you know, the distributors are kind of like just getting rid of them because I think because of the changing, so the way I understand from David Austin is because of the changing um, climate, climate, they're trying to, I guess, develop roses that can handle that. And so this is one of their older ones from the much older line. It, it, this might be one of the first ones they came out with. And so some of the older ones didn't make the cut. So this one they're not offering anymore. So anyway, I'm trying to make sure I do everything to take care of this. I have three total because obviously once these die, you can't get them anymore. But you know, now think about it, I'll have to check Grace Rose Farm because they may have some but like even heirloom roses, they stop carrying them. So definitely have to hold on to these. I have these in pots. So if I leave, I'm taking these babies with me because, you know. Uh, this one um, I got from, you can get this one from David Austin Roses. I also got it from Flags Garden Center. And I think Spots, which is a local hardware store to me, had them. This one is called Thomas the Beckett. Um, it's a nice, it's just a nice, the picture to me seems a little bit more true red. I think it had a little bit more magenta in it in reality, but it's lovely, has a lovely fragrance. And so that's in the Rose Garden now. And then Benjamin uh, Britton. So this one, Flag Garden Center has it. Also Spots Hardware has this. When they get it, they'll have it. Now, the weird thing is this one kind of looks, has a lot of pink and salmon in it, but When I had it, I'm trying to think, has it bloomed for me this year? I don't know if it's bloomed in my current location, but I had one at my last house, Wild Deep Cottage. And from what I remember, it had a lot of orange to it, which it ended up kind of clashing with things. But for some reason, I want to say when I saw it bloom recently, it didn't look that way. So I'm wondering if it may be a soil chemistry thing. So we'll see how this looks. I've got it in the red section, but I do have it away from the other reds. So that way, it, in case if it's more of a red orange, it won't clash too bad. Um, This one is called Princess Alexandra of Kent. I got this from Flags Garden Center. Um, I've had it at this garden as well as my other um, garden. It's just a nice, a nice pink rose. It has fragrance to it. Does not last very long as a cut flower, though I have seen places listed as a good cut flower. I just didn't find it to be so. Uh, this one is Claire Austin. I got this from um, Flags Garden Center. Um, it's just a nice off-white creamy color. I, for whatever reason, I didn't have any pictures on my phone and I don't know why. I guess I keep forgetting to take pictures of it, which is kind of embarrassing. <laughs> I have so many plants I keep forgetting to take pictures of. And then this one is called Winchester Cathedral and I got this one at Flags. I'm trying to remember. I knew I had a cream colored rose at my, at Wild Eve Cottage and I'm trying to remember if it was Winchester Cathedral or if it was uh, Windermere. I think Windermere is the other one. I can't remember. It was one of the two of them. Um, but yeah, it's just a nice basic uh, white rose. And then this one I got from Marazzo's. It's called Moonlight Romantica. I know Heirloom Roses also has one. So it is a light yellow. Now it seemed, I did I do think I saw a bloom on it this fall once I got it. But the thing is, because it was fall, it was cooler. It had a lot more color. I have a feeling in the summer when it blooms, it's probably going to be more of a cream than a yellow. And this one right here is Princess Alexandra of Kent. Excuse me. <laughs> That's Crown Princess Margareta. I don't even know why I said that, guys. I'm so tired right now. But this is Crown Princess Margareta. Um, this is one's a climber. I had it in my last garden at Wild Deep Cottage. I really liked it. Um, it's just, yeah, it's just a very pretty apricot rose. It has lovely fragrance. Um, pr very vigorous, very vigorous. So if you're looking for a nice apricot climber, this is the one for you. 
Uh, then this one is called Carding Mill. I got this from Flags Garden Center. I think Spots may have had it at one point too. This is another apricot. As you can see, it has a little bit more, it's more of a, has more, I think it has a deeper orange plus pink in it than the um, Crown Princess Margareta. The pr Crown, pr Crown Princess Margareta was definitely a lighter, a lighter peach type thing. Uh, this one has light fragrance. I had this in a pot. It doesn't really do well in a pot. It was okay. It was just limping along. So I did put it in the ground in the in La Rosere. So I think it's going to do bet much better next year. Uh, then this one I got from Heirloom Roses. This is called Julia's Rose. It's kind of, ooh. It's, it's, it's apricotty, but it's kind of got some brown, like, um, mm. it's kind of got some brown in there. It's almost like the, the peach going into kind of tan. Uh, so I am, you know, it kind of remind me of when I went to do that class at Longwood for the, um, for the decorating, the, um, the floral arranging, um, they had this one rose that was called, um, it was called Toffee Crunch. And I thought that that was an actual rose. But what it is, is they took like either an orange or a yellow rose and they like spray painted it to kind of give it that like a uh, toffee color look. And so one of the reasons I got this one is because this is what it looked like. But this is actually, I think it's actually got that tan naturally, not spray painted. Uh, so I cannot wait to see this one in bloom. It's going to be probably a nice neutral color. And then the next one I got is called Spice Coffee. Um, so this also has a very neutral look to it. And so um, I don't even know what color it is. It's kind of got a little bit tan in it, some pink, but um, it definitely looks like a, a very milky coffee. So I can't wait to see how this one is going to look in the spring. And then this one is called... Um, Graham Thomas, um, Flags Garden Center has it, Spots has it. Obviously, you can get it from the David Austin website. Uh, the Graham Thomas is a climber. It's very vigorous. It has a really big, um, big bloom on it. And if I remember correctly, I think Graham Thomas was uh, the one where uh, back in the summer when I went to the Mars the Morris Arboretum, we were in the Rose Garden. I think it was Graham Thomas that we were doing the smell test with, with Jude the Obscure, if I remember correctly. Graham Thomas does have, has a really nice, a powerful scent. It's, it's, um, it's, I'm trying to think of what, it has a, it's not very fruity. It's definitely floral. It's, it's a little bit sweeter, but not as sweet as Jude the Obscure. So this is a nice one. It's also very vigorous too. Uh, then I have this other yellow one called Teasing Georgia. This is also a climber. It's a very vigorous climber. It has a, it's a lighter yellow than Graham Thomas. It has a much lighter fragrance. Uh, for me, Graham Thomas, actually Graham Thomas, especially if you, if you're getting it when it's first starting to open, it has, it, the fragrance is actually really heavy. Uh, Teasing Georgia is a lot um, milder in fragrance. And once again, it's a much lighter yellow, but that's also a vigorous climber as well. Probably not as vigorous as Graham Thomas, but close to it. Uh, then this is one of the ones I got from Grace Rose Farm. It's called Honey Dijon. This is going to be a new one to my garden. I have not received it yet. Uh, so I got it because I it kind of reminded me of descriptions of this antique rose called um, La uh, Gloire de Dijon, um, which also kind of had, was a buff colored. And so this one is like this. So I'm hoping, but I think... This is probably, in terms of disease resistance, is going to be better than La Guar uh, de Dijon because uh, La Guar de Dijon, from what I understood, seemed to get diseases pretty easily. So, and I didn't really want, you know, like a disease bucket in my rose garden. Um, then I got this one called Golden Mustard from um, Grace Rose Farm. And so as you can see, it's kind of like multicolored. So you got the yellow, the pink, uh, you know, the the buff. And so that's this is going to be really interesting. Then I also got this one called Symbol. And it's kind it's very similar. Um, I'm trying to remember. I mean, the Symbol act obviously has a lot more color than uh, the than the other one. 
So they're very similar looking, but once again, we'll see how they actually perform once they get in the garden. I have a feeling my soil chemistry is going to change some things. And I'm sure in the garden, I mean, they don't look, even from the pictures, they don't look like too, too similar. Like I said, this one has, seems to have more saturated colors than the other one, but you know, we'll see what happens when I get it. Um, then they have this one called Persuasion. Um, I got this because this is kind of like part of their Jane Austen collection. And Jane Austen is like my favorite author. And I love the book Persuasion. Um, and so she, they have some other ones. Like I think they've got Mansfield Park and some other ones. So I'm eventually going to get one of each of the collection. But um, that is the reason I got this one. And this is a yellow one. So it'll go in the yellow section. Uh, then I have got this one. It's called Sahara Sensation. Um, so this is definitely a buff one. Um, hmm. This one seems to have pink on the tips. This, it's going to be, I, I don't know why I got so many buff, like, uh, neutral ones. I guess it's because I, I think obviously these colors, when it's something more neutral can go with a lot of different things. So I can't wait to see how this is all going to play out. This one, actually, now that I'm looking at it, it seems like it has a little bit of yellow, kind of like a yellow into buff. So yeah, we'll see. Uh, then I got Westminster Abbey. So as you can see, this one is a very light pink, almost kind of whitish color. Um, and so it's not quite white. It has a little bit more color in it. I'm not really sure what color it's supposed to be. But yeah, that's going to be a nice one. Um, then this, the, um, this is one I saw in Morris Arboretum. And I was like, oh, I have to have that one. It's called Poseidon. And Grace Rose Farm has it and Heirloom Roses has it. I think I got mine from Grace Rose Farm because from what I remember, Heirloom Roses is actually sold out of it. And I don't know when it's going to come back in stock. I might pick up another one eventually. Um, from what I remember at Morris Arboretum, it has a fragrance. It was one of those things I couldn't put my finger on what the fragrance was because like roses kind of have five have five scents. So it's like, it's like that old garden, myrrh, tea, um, musk, and fruit. I wasn't really sure what this particular fragrance was. And when we were at Morris Arboretum, I was asking, was it Devin? I was like, what do you think? And he couldn't place it either. Uh, but it just had a really interesting smell to it. And so that's going to go in the section with the Arbor Rose, the Sunbelt, and then Lagerfeld and those, because that's it's lavender. So I think I'm going to have one bed of just all lavender. And so the next one is Neptune. This one is a lavender that seems to have a lot more pink in it. Um, in case you guys, I don't know how much of you guys are, like how many of you guys are into like um, mythology, but um, in, you know, I think it's so in Greek mythology, Poseidon is the god of the sea, whereas in Roman mythology, it's Neptune. So I thought it, that was kind of cute. So that's why I got the two of them like that. So we'll, we'll be in the same bed. And then uh, my sister, I asked my sister uh, and mom for a rose for Christmas. And this one they got from Heirloom Roses. It's called Belle Epoque. And so this is a light orange. It's very, very orangey. So um, yeah, so those are all the roses as, as of right now, which are in the rose garden. So anyway, guys, I didn't want to keep you guys too long with this, but I thought you guys might enjoy I thought it might be kind of fun for you guys to see um to see what I got going on so actually you know what since I have you guys here let me look at this one again this is honey Dijon symbol yeah honey Dijon is a little bit lighter so yes yeah, so anyway so um guys that is it for this video I hope you enjoyed it um I know some of you guys are probably going to be scrambling, trying to write down, down the names um, and that, that sort of thing. Um, hopefully it gave you guys some ideas about some things that you might want in your own gardens. Um, I try, I'm trying to, I do have other roses that are not in the rose garden, like you know, in the parterre garden. I have, you know, I do have other roses, but I was trying to have some, some different things in here. So 
Um, we'll see how things go next year. The colors on them, you know, the fragrance on them, um, even, you know, how well they do in cut flower arrangements. And so it's going to be, I'm looking forward to this whole thing. I'm, I, I can't wait. It's, um, I'm really excited. It's been a while since I've been excited about roses. Um, you know, the Morris Arboretum and Longwood Garden, but more so the Morris Arboretum were a great source of inspiration. And, you know, I kind of figured out what it is with roses. You have to, they have to be fertilized. So I'm going to be getting a lot of um, Job's fertilizer sticks to make sure they're, because when they're fertilized and they're healthy and they're being fed, they fend off disease and that sort of thing much um, easier. Uh, the other thing is with the Rose Garden is that um, there is this one, there is this one spray, um, it's Bear Advanced, that does really, really well. And although I would like to try to do something more organic, the bottom line is I don't have that type of time where I can stay on top of the organic like that because organics, you have to spray a lot. You're, you're constantly out there spraying. Uh, whereas the um, the Bear really does last 30 days. So that's what I'm going to be using to keep everything um, nice and healthy. So anyway, guys, if you have uh, have not checked out Heirloom Roses, they got like 900 roses. Do it. David Austin. Well, you guys know I'm moving away from David Austin Roses. And Grace Rose Farm has a lot. Um, in terms of prices, Heirloom Roses um, has... Okay, so wait. It's Grace Rose Farm, Heirloom Roses, and Antique Rose Emporium. Of the three, Antique Rose Emporium has the best prices. Antique Rose Emporium has a lot of antique roses, and there are some that I'm planning to get that I have not ordered yet. Um, then Heirloom Roses has, their prices are higher. They have more selection than Antique Rose Emporium, but they have a lot more modern things. Uh, the nice thing about Heirloom Roses is that everything is on its own root system. Then obviously the highest price is Grace Rose Farm. Now they do have a lot that's on its own roast, you know, on its own um, root system, uh, but they have a lot of new new cultivars and a lot of these cultivars are coming from Europe and they have like exclusive licensing. Um, they are using another rose farm called Otto and Sons to help them, I guess, you know, produce more of these roses. So their prices are higher because they're trying to make sure that Otto and Sons gets a fair price for their efforts. I think they're sharing some of the royalties or something like that. Um, I think a lot of times when you have these people who are like the middleman and doing the actual growing for places, I think a lot of times they get, you know, they kind of get, it's really, they get, don't, they get paid very little. Uh, but Grace Rose Farm is trying to make sure that they get paid, you know, accordingly. And so that's what their price, why their prices are higher now. So, you know, can you go to Grace Rose Farm and just like lay out and get like 25 roses? Probably not. I mean, unless you're independently wealthy, maybe you can do that. Um, but what I tend to do with Grace Rose Farm is when they have a sale, that's when I tend to get it. So when, uh, with like, I think it was the last two I showed you, um, Poseidon and Neptune. Um, I ordered those because they had, I forgot what the sale was, but then sometimes they have, uh, she has sales where it's like buy two, get one free. And so some of, I think the first uh, three, I, cause, oh, and that's the other thing with some of these, not all of them, but some of them I got two, not one. So with Poseidon and Neptune, I got one of each. Well, when it came to, let's see, which one was it? I think it was Honey Dijon golden mustard and symbol. I got two of each because that was the two buy two, get one free. So I only pay, I paid for four and I got two of the roses free. Um, so you just have to take advantage of sales like that. Uh, but I will put links to everything in the description. And so um, happy shopping. So anyway, guys, uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, I will be back with a new video on Saturday. I'm going to start doing some care guides for the wine and chocolate collection. As a matter of fact, I probably need to actually talk about the wine and chocolate collection because I know some of you guys have been eagerly waiting to hear what's going on with uh, peonies, petals, and posies. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.